my understanding is, Kip, that you brought this case here. I did, yes. So why don't you start by just explaining a little bit of uh, what happened. Well, I certainly didn't want to be here. Sure. I, I uh, thought that we had negotiated in good faith mm -hmm. at the service station, mm -hmm. at, at uh, his mm -hmm. place of business. Mm -hmm. I brought my car in. Mm -hmm. It had worked perfectly for five years. Mm -hmm. It has started to act up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, he informed me after examining the car mm -hmm that it needed a, a, a tune-up, which mm -hmm. sounded perfectly reasonable. He quoted me the price of $350, and I said, fine, do it. Let's get it done. Okay. I then, when I, it, I didn't hear from him. This is, uh, to me, the important part. I did not hear anything. Okay. I gave him my, my home phone, my cell phone, and my work phone. Didn't hear a word. When I get come to get the car, mm -hmm. he tells me $700. He doubled the price without contacting me. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, I mean, I think anyone in business would say that if you're going to double your price, you need to communicate that, mm -hmm. because I would have shopped around. He refused to turn over the keys to my car, and uh, mm -hmm. I was pr pretty upset about that. Yeah. I stormed out of his place, yeah. and then when I saw him talking to other customers, I went in and got my keys. Mm -hmm. I figure my property, my car, mm -hmm. my keys. And so you found Michael. You took your car to him. It was acting up. Mm -hmm. You heard him tell you that it was a three fifty hundred dollar tune up. Mm -hmm. Then you left your contact information, and then you left. That's correct. Okay, so you, you went back to the station. Yeah. You found repair to be seven hundred, mm -hmm. and I, I hear you, Michael, that you want to tell your side of the story. And so <laughs> we'll get we'll get to that in a minute. And you got into an argument about it because that didn't feel right to you because you were expecting three fifty. That's correct. And then we'll talk about that. Then you wound up driving off with the keys. Yes. In the car. Okay. So, Michael, let's hear from you. And the part that he's leaving out is that when he brought the car in in the morning. He insisted that it was very of the utmost importance that it be finished today. My mechanic did try calling him. We left a message with whoever answered the phone at his place of work. We also uh, tried calling his house, mm -hmm. and there was no answer there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I felt that we tried in good faith to communicate to him. The other thing, too, is if, if we were going to finish the car today, we had to order the parts and get them brought to us from a distributor mm -hmm. and get them put in. And, you know, I, I could have said, uh, okay, let's just forget about the problems that we found, finish the tune-up and hand the card to him, but I've, I don't feel that I would have been doing my job if I'd have done that. Mm -hmm. um, and for him to accuse me of ripping him off, I think is such, you know, an incendiary thing to do, especially when I was referred to him by a longtime customer who's mm -hmm. always been satisfied with my service. Mm -hmm. So I think the accusation that came out of him was really unjustified and, and really sent the whole situation into something, uh, someplace it really didn't need to go. Mm -hmm. the, the point is, we did the work. Mm -hmm. we, did, uh, we did the work honestly, we did it uh, effectively, mm -hmm. and we did it under the mandate that he laid on onto us, which was to finish it by the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So Skip came in referred by a customer mm -hmm. of yours, okay, and he needed the car to, today. You felt that this was important for him to That's get it that day. Said. Okay. Um, you inspected it, and then you said the radiators and hoses, so did you find that there was more to it than just a tune-up? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then at what point did you try calling or contacting him? I think it was right away. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's a very busy shop. I know that we made at least two attempts. And then who made the judgment call to order the hoses and the radiator? Well, and I stuff? did because I thought that's what he wanted. I thought he wanted the car back today. Okay. And he, he, it, would, it would have really been problematic for him to drive the car the way it was. I okay. mean, he, he, if, you, if, you, if you lose the cooling system, you're going to be into the thousands of dollars, not yeah. just a few hundred. Okay. Okay. So you, you made the call to order the parts. Yeah. And so then what happened when Skip showed up to take the car back? Well, I presented him with a bill. Um, he uh, kind of got very, uh, you know, angry about it, mm -hmm. and uh, he refused to pay. To pay. Mm -hmm. And I guess you know, I lost my cool a little bit, and I said, "Well, you're not getting your that freaking car." And I hung the keys back up. But he left. 
Uh, I was talking to another customer, and then he, I saw him go back into the office. He took the keys and he drove off. I got no message, no correspondence, mm -hmm. no no uh, exchange of, mm -hmm. of any words. Well, the mm -hmm. fact is, we did try to call well, wait, wait, Actually, let me just I know, just I just want to sure. say that. Yeah, okay. And uh, I, I told him, you know, all the way through that yeah. I, was, I was perfectly willing to pay him what we had agreed upon. Right. Let's say that we did reach you. We actually did reach you, and we told you your radiator was shot and your hoses need replacing. What would you have said? I would have said, I, I think I need to get a, another opinion. For $350? Well, no. The car's five years old. I, you know, I, I, I don't want to pay more than the book mm -hmm. value of mm -hmm. the car to, to, to get a radiator fixed. Yep.